Hello, my name is Fraser Simons. This is my channel, Springboard Thought. Today I'm going to be doing the ratings and review tag. I was tagged by... Hello, forgive my little intercession here. I just wanted to make sure that uh, people knew that I also was tagged by Courtney Farader and Hannah Loves Books, I believe is the channel. And so I'll put those below as well as uh, Brian from Bookish. And uh, I am going to start as this tag prompts by tagging other people. A whole bunch of people have been tagged already because this tag is making its rounds today. So hopefully these people haven't been tagged. And a few of the people that I think have been might not have been, but will soon be anyway, as this tag uh, progresses throughout the day, probably. So I'll take uh, Kira the Scribner, create, uh, read, write, create, Katja, remembered reads, the book bully, and apocalypse reading. I'd be interested in hearing what they have to say about how they formulate their reviews and their thinking. So next is how do you know you've just finished a good book? Is it a thinking or a feeling response? Um, so good is, it just depends on what I'm looking to get out of the book. And by genre, this varies greatly for me. If I'm reading an academic text, good might be that it has proven its thesis or whatever. If I'm reading like a thriller, it did it keep the pages turning? That's pretty much all I'm looking for from commercial fiction. So depending on what genre and what precisely this book is and what I, the assumptions that I bring to the book and the expectations, mostly it is simply did this book meet my expectations or didn't it? And I'll get into that later in the prompts. When you begin to form your review rating, what is the first question to ask yourself? Did this book meet my expectations or did it not? And I let the text dictate what those expectations are typically. I won't read summaries, I won't read blurbs. The only thing that I typically do if I'm looking to purchase a book, which is fairly rare, I'll try to get it from the library, uh, is I'll look at my friends' ratings. I don't really care what the overall rating is unless it's like super bombed or something. Um, but otherwise, I wanna see, yeah, the people that, I follow people that are very eclectic and I deliberately follow people who are having the adverse tastes to mine. And so if a book is quite polarizing, then that's pretty good for me, depending on who who likes it and who, who doesn't like it, basically. And for instance, if I go to a book that is highly uh, unconventional and a whole bunch of one stars exist and then Mark Nash five stars it, chances are I'll probably check out that book regardless, right? The general public doesn't want to interact with the book as typically I do, Mark, Cena, other people who are looking at unconventional fiction, Noah. People like that, we know that we get pleasure from the uh, craft work that goes into it being unconventional, whereas other people might not appreciate that. So again, it just is a matter of expectations, basically. Do you do star ratings? Why or why not? I do. So the way that my sort of scale works is three stars is did it meet my expectations? Yes. And so it didn't do anything more than that, which is four stars exceeds expectations. Five stars is ex exceeds expectations and an X factor, which is usually, it can range from things, but typically it's an emotional response to it. And then two stars is did not meet expectations. One star was, uh, it does not do what it set out to do. It can be offensive. For instance, if I DNF a book because I can't accept the premise of the book or whatever it is setting up in my expectations is I know not what I am in the mood for. I'm somehow not able to accept the book in the spirit of which it is written. Then I did not finish it usually and I don't even rate it because I didn't accept the book on the terms that I have set for myself. Is your star rating consistent? I.e. are all your five star books better than all your four star books? So better is, it's all expectations and I like the expectations because 
It allows me to approach a book that is self-published, commercial fiction, literary fiction, uh, contemporary and academic text, whatever, and still be able to legitimately assign a star rating as is not necessarily comparative between them all. So if I loved A Little Life five stars and I didn't so much like a book that was an academic paper or something, but I was able to accept the premise and go with it and everything, and it exceeded my expectations, going beyond proving the thesis or something, then I still think that is fair. And I don't have to measure the text between each other because it's all a matter of expectations. And it also enables me to interact with classics how I like. If it is a book that I think um, has tested the, the lengths of time that is, has been canonized in, is it still relevant? Is it still interesting to our time period? Does it still even need to be bothered as uh, canonized? Because as a person of a certain age within a certain generation, I think everyone's opinion about a specific classic shows some merit if we're going to canonize or decanonize books. Um, and so I like to weigh in on that and I think it's appropriate that my expectations of a canonized book, a classic, needs to constantly be proving itself to the culture and making itself relevant for whatever reason. There's a wide range of uh, reasons why it might be relevant. but. So expectations can encompass a very large amount of stuff there. It depends, I guess. And a lot of times my expectations also get swept up in the cultural meal or whatever, right? Like the, the um, fervor for, for Rooney and stuff like that, the hype around the Expanse book coming out. All of those things do get encapsulated into my expectations. But when I'm actually consuming the text, I do my very best to absolutely just dive into the text. Like I have no other distractions. I let it completely consume me as I am consuming it. And I try to let the book tell me what it is about and what it is trying to do and then decide if it succeeds at the end or not. If no, what language do you use to convey the quality of a book in your reviews? So for me, I am very aware of not wanting to spoil the book. And so I generally take an analytical view of things, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I think I generally will mention what the pros are like in, in an analytical term, not generally conveying a feeling, but more if it's lyrical, poetic, uh, purple, Hemingway-esque, sometimes good, sometimes bad, but the language that I use, I think would be generally analytical, but I'm open to people critiquing that notion. Does this form an informal rating or ranking the language that I use? Um, I suppose so. I mean, for people that are heavily invested in if a story structurally, its craft work is good, I think the analytical aspects will speak to it. I think I could do a much better job of contextualizing a book even more personally than I already do. Uh, but it does stem from a place of not wanting to spoil a book. I really think that approaching something that you're consuming for entertainment should be like a solo effort. Do you believe every book has its perfect reader? Does this contradict the idea that a book can be, quote, bad? Um, no, I don't think so. There's, the book can be bad in the sense that whatever it is trying to do is not accomplished, I think. Like that's the best way of being a bad book. It legitimately doesn't succeed in whatever it is trying to do. In terms of craft work, I tend to apply if it is exercising a good level of craft at certain things. For me, there is a difference between qualifying the type of prose it is to the style that I like and it being legitimately bad prose. For instance, when I talked about the Hanjin murders, I said that the prose were bad and specifically went into similes were not actually written correctly. Like and as were conflated as the same thing when something fell. It was like the thing that actually did fall and so should be as. 
also the grammar was off, stuff like that. So I think you can legitimately have bad qualities in a book where it is legitimately poorly written or poorly edited in some cases. Um, and if it doesn't succeed at what it's doing, like I said, it's fundamentally not a good book. What book that you hated have you recommended? Because generally if it's one star, like for instance, The Silent Patient, I thought was completely bad. Uh, and maybe my expounding on the analytical aspects and the craft work of story tells you why mysteries so often fail for me, right? A mystery hinges on very certain aspects of the craft succeeding, which I don't think Silent Patient succeeds at at all. Plus, it is also detrimental in its characterization of mental health and mental health professionals and perpetuates bad stereotypes about mentally ill people and mental health professionals and how institutions are run and accountability and, and stuff like that. And then I also think that the actual mystery is not deployed correctly at all. So I think the only books I would recommend are typically three star books, books that I think succeed at a craft level and rate them so even though if I don't particularly think it exceeds my expectations in the form of it being better than able to tell its story. Um, I don't think I would recommend something that I would view as a failed craft. So what makes a, a book good, bad, or great by your evaluation? So like I said, good is just means it, it succeeds at what it sets out to do. Exceeding expectations is it literally does anything more than that, in my opinion. It has some noteworthy thing that the book, the author, has actually done. Typically, this is conflated into the overall voice of the story being good, because that's what I care about. Uh, and I'll separate voice as in, I don't mean the voice of the character, I mean the authorial voice crafting every aspect of the voice of the story overall. So all of the characters have good voice. All of the diction, the uh, prose, deployment, everything is well crafted and the voice resonates with me. And then exceptional is something beyond that. It generally, you could codify it as a surprise in some way. And that surprise is derived from the book tells me what it was doing and it still managed to surprise me. And I read a lot of books. When evaluating the quality of a book, do you have a specific criteria or aspects of the book, such as character development, that you consider? Does this change if you are writing an in-depth review versus just thinking about the book for enjoyment? So I think there's a lot of conflation between an actual uh, like rhetoric that people build, like a critical framework of which to judge a book. Generally, an early critic would probably build something like that to build trust in the reader, to refine their own process of what they're looking like uh, and what they're interested in and attempting to be fair and confront their own biases and stuff like that. And within each scale, there would be a sliding scale of subjectivity for the specific book category. So what they think is good plot development and bad, etc. So to a degree, it is still subjective, but it is still a critical framework that is applied fairly to every single book, which I don't think I've seen anybody do on booktube whatsoever. And most critics who have legs, I mean legs in the actual industry, they've been there a long time, <laughs> um, have evolved past that framework where they have internalized so much information about their own rubric their own rhetoric, their uh, critical framework that they have developed in their palette, that they apply things to a instinctual level, I guess. They know what the author is trying to do. They talk about that thing. If they're balanced, then they'll say where it, uh, its flaws are or what it doesn't typically do, what the author's focused on, etc. And so I think there's these levels and Booktube doesn't hit that level either generally. In terms of analytics for the criteria of me, uh, I don't think I have a static criteria. I have things that I particularly like in a book that 
if people have been watching me, they can definitely guess at. But the only criteria I'm looking for is trying to accept the story or the book or the novel or the academic work or whatever on the terms of which and the spirit of which it is written and presented to me, the reader. Oh. Do you consider star ratings or average ratings when choosing books to read add to your TBR? I think I answered that before. I look at the disparity of the ratings in my actual friend group. It would take a... L I don't think I care about the Goodreads at anymore at all. Maybe if it was super lowly rated, I might shirk it, but I will always look down to see what my friends have rated or the people I follow or whatever. And like I said, because I follow an eclectic group, I can generally see if it is going to be generally to my tastes or of my interests. Who on booktube does reliable and interesting reviews of books that you know you can use to decide if a book is for you or not? What makes this review so good? So because I'm so new on booktube, I, I definitely have purchased books that other people have recommended. Uh, Mark Nash, Cena, Bob the Booker, I think a couple from Gunpowder's uh, Fiction and Plot. I'm not sure. Oh, Travel Through Stories is definitely uh, interested, I think, in the same stuff as me. He recommended uh, The Trees by Percival Everett, and he's actually great. He, When he talks about a book, generally what will happen is I'll know if I'm interested in it or not, I'll stop the video, and when I consume it, and review it or whatever, then I'll then return to his uh, video to complete it after I have put my own thoughts on it. And then it's kind of fun for me to cross-reference what we both thought and stuff like that. He generally reads what's wider than me. He's more academic and learned, probably as is Cena and Mark Nash and stuff. So I guess I'm uh, looking up to more analytical academic types, I suppose. But I'm so new here that I'm sure I'll pick up books that other people will have recommended and depending on if I like them or not, I'll be able to figure out if their tastes are aligned with me or not. But I think everybody that I follow talks about books in a certain way that I jibe with or I generally wouldn't follow them, I think. And I follow a lot of people, I try to comment on all the people that I follow. so. Um, generally, I'll be finding that out in the future and don't quite know yet. Those booktubers use different language than you to evaluate and review the overall quality of the book. Yes, I think they all speak more eruditely about books. I really like that Mark Nash knows himself so well that he separates craft from emotional response uh, reliably. Um, I think Cena does the same thing. I think Travel Through Stories less delivers an emotional response, perhaps, and is more analytical. So I think he's just better at doing the exact same thing that I try to do, basically. Bob the Booker he, uh, speaks very differently than me uh, and is quite good at doing what I would eventually like to do. I'd like to be a combination of travel through stories, Mark Nash and Bob the Booker. That's my 2022 goals. And that's it for this tag. So I will see you next Tuesday for another tag. I've tried to schedule all my tags for Tuesdays. I've done quite a few now. So you'll be seeing tags for at least two months.